top of the morning to everybody. Okay, I just received a question um, about how to use Microsoft Remote Desktop. Uh, this is an app that allows you to connect to a Windows desktop in order to be able to, uh, to talk to it or to control it. Now you can see I have a bunch of, um, a bunch of settings here. And what I'm going to do is log into one of them. And basically all you need to do is double click it. Now I'm going to go over how to set it up. There's, there's a couple of parts to set it up and, and I'll do that in the remote desktop just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Okay. In order to use remote desktop from a windows machine, the first thing you have to do is set up the windows machine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my start menu. And if you're on Windows 7, you'll right-click on computer here. If you don't have computer here, here's how you get it. Right-click into this area and hit properties. And then you go to start menu, customize, and you can change your computer to display as a menu or, dis or don't display or display as a link. Um, default is don't display, so I like it as a menu. Um, kind of bugs me not having it there. And then just apply that. So then you go to start menu, go to computer, and right-click and go to properties. On Windows XP, you'll probably have your computer here on the desktop somewhere, so you just right click on it and go to properties. Um, it's a little different for each one. For Windows 7, you'll go into remote settings right here and it'll bring these things up. Windows XP will kind of already have this up. Now what you wanna do is make sure on remote desktop you allow connections from computers running any version um, I think you can even use this one. I just have it on this one. And then you select your users. Now when you select your users, this is pretty important here, um, you have to add the users that are going to connect. If you don't add them, they won't be able to connect. So you've got to find out if you're on a domain, you've got to add them from the domain. If you're on a local workstation, you need to add them as local workstation users. Generally, your default administrator will already have access. Um, but you still want to make sure and add them anyway, just to make sure they're, they're there and they can access the remote desktop. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close this down. Okay. Now here on actual remote desktop software, we've already done the setup onto on windows. So now we're going to connect to it from the Mac. So what I'm going to do is hit new. And it comes up with this edit remote desktops. You, on the connection name, you give it whatever you want. Okay. And then here on the PC name, you can give it an IP address or a host name if you know the host name of the computer. Okay. On this one, I'm going to go ahead and give it a host name. Now on gateway, um, the gateway is basically it's a way to connect to the computer through a router. So if you have a router, you can use the gateway to connect to it. Um, in this case, I don't have a router. My, my things are all on my side of the router, so I don't need to worry about it. But if you're trying to connect to something on the other side of a router, you need to make sure you have the gateway configured. All right. Username is the one you're going to connect with and password is the one you're going to use to connect with as well. Um, you should have a password. It's always safer and more secure to make sure that you have a password. Um, how you do that is up to you. Okay. Resolution. This has all the different resolutions that are possible on your screen or on the Windows screen. Um, I stick with native because then I'm allowed to do the full screen thing. And I'll show you, they've, since we've updated Yosemite, the Microsoft Remote Desktop is also updated. And um, the full screen stuff is a lot better than it used to be. Um, I showed you before that I would get a gray screen on all my other monitors when I did the remote desktop as full screen, but now it doesn't do that. Now I can actually do full screen and move it to different monitors and keep it that way. It's really nice. Um, colors, 
my connection is fast enough that I can stick with highest quality, but it all depends on what you're connecting through and how you're connecting and, and how far away your, your remote desktop computer is physically from you. So you have to make sure that, that you keep it good enough that you don't get a lot of lag because you will get a little bit of lag over a remote desktop. This one works for me. I've got plenty fast Ethernet. I'm running uh, one gigabit for everything with Cat6, so I'm pretty good as far as it goes. Uh, full screen mode, you can use a custom. Um, so you can change all this stuff, or you can hit OS 10 neg native. Uh, with Yosemite, this is pretty nice. Even though it says use all monitors, you can actually use, it'll just use the one monitor, and then you can move it over. If you have multiple monitors attached to that remote desktop, it will use them. So you'll use two monitors on your Mac if you have two monitors on your remote desktop. And you can adjust that once you connect and, and you can use all three monitors or however many you've got connected. Um, start session in full screen. I keep that on by default now. I used to not. Um, scale content, if your monitor resolution is bigger than your monitor on your Mac, like let's say you're running this on a MacBook Air, uh, scale content will allow it to scroll around. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing to do. Um, I usually keep it off. Actually, scale content, let me rephrase that. Scale content will shrink the content so that it fits within your monitor. Okay, and I usually keep that on. Um, if you turn it off, you can scroll around if the monitor is bigger or the resolution is bigger than your physical monitor. All right, session. This has some little funky things that you can play with. Um, sound play on device means play it on your Mac. Don't play sound means don't play sound. Play on remote PC means you can bug the person in the next room. It's kind of fun. I've done that before. Connect to an admin session allows you to install things if you're an admin user. Um, it also allows you to use consoles and so on and so forth. Forward printing devices means it will forward all the printers from the remote desktop computer to your Mac and you will be able to print to your through your Mac. Um, so if you have 10 printers installed on your Mac and you don't have anything installed on your Windows and you're just going to have it sitting there in a box, it will uh, use your printers from your Mac. And then swap mouse buttons. I don't know why anyone would want to do this, but to each his own. Um, it'll switch the right and left clicks. Okay, folder redirection. I've never actually used this, but you can create folders inside the remote desktop computer that point directly to your Mac. Um, I've never, like I said, I've never used it, but there is a way to use it. Um, let's say I went sharing. I can browse for a path, and it'll find something on my Mac. I'll say movies folder and hit OK. So there's going to be a folder on my computer, on my remote desktop computer that will say movies, and it will point to this. So anything I drop in there will go to here. All right, I'm going to close this, and I'm actually going to delete this one. I don't want to keep it. Okay, so once you've done your setup, all you have to do is double-click the computer you're going to connect to. Now, this one's a Windows XP computer. And that's it. Um, pretty much everything is the same. Now, notice this content, you can kind of see a head through there. Uh, this content has been scaled. If I go up to the top and I, and I click up here in the menu bar, well, that takes me to the finder. It shouldn't take me to the finder. All right, if I'm on a different app like Finder and so on and so forth, I can move things around and this will stay in the background. Um, yeah, it's not doing what I want it to do. The command key on the Mac keyboard now becomes the Windows thing. The option key is your alt click or alt whatever and control is, is um, control key. So if you wanted to select multiple items, I don't want to do it to that disk. 
All right, so if you wanted to select multiple items, let's say I want to grab these, I can shift click, and if I try to do that, it'll grab all of them. But if I control click, instead of command click, I can use, use that. It's kind of a neat feature. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and quit because it's really quick, easy way to disconnect. Now, if you disconnect instead of log out from the Windows machine, you'll stay logged in as you. So that computer will constantly be logged in as whatever name this, this was. Um, you won't receive any updates. It won't be able to do certain things if you're running on a domain with updates. Um, you also, if someone else tries to connect, it might not let them connect. So you have to decide whether you want to just log out or whether you want to disconnect. And the easiest way to disconnect is just quit the app because you can start it right back up so quickly. Okay, now it's working. If I go up to the top, I can see the menu bar for, for remote desktop. Um, and I can choose preferences in here. And you can see the uh, resolution and gateway if I want to. I can also do full screen, which I'm on. So if I click it again, it goes away. Now notice the scroll bars here. That's because it's not scaled. So if I go window scaling, it will fit it within this movable window. So now I'm going to go back to full screen. Okay, and it's scaled. And if I turn the scaling off, right now this is the same size, but if it wasn't, I would get those scroll bars here on the side. Now I can close the connection. I can uh, quit. Um, I usually use quit, but you can also use close, which is command W. Um, and then if I go like this, Microsoft Remote Desktop, so you can see this one says Overture. Uh, this one says Microsoft Remote, Microsoft Remote Desktop, and I can click on that, and it takes me back to this window. And then I can pick a different one and go in from there. And then, once I do that, anytime I come up here, I can pick the other desktops. I don't want to restart that now. I'm going to go ahead and Command W, close it. Let's go to Overture, Command W, close it. All right, so that is, well, there's a couple other things you can check out as well. And I really haven't played with these, but might as well. Remote resources. These are web-based. So if you have... Let's say you have a Windows server that's serving your personal website. And you've got DNS set up on the internet and you can go ahead and put in a URL, um, domain and user and password, and you can actually remote control that computer through these remote resources. Kind of a neat feature. I don't have any of those, so I've never used it. And this I've never used but it's supposed to help you use your work apps from your phone, tablet, or computer. So if, let's say you have a, uh, a certain app, Microsoft Word or whatever, you can actually use that from your tablet. You can use it here. So you sign in with the email address of that account, and then you can use the Azure apps here on your Mac. I've never used that before, so that's a new feature. Mostly I'm interested in this in the desktops. Okay, well, hopefully that answers any questions about how you actually use this app. It's quite fun and, and pretty intuitive, so um, have fun with it. Make sure you do your setup correctly first. That's the most important step because if you don't have the setup done properly and you don't have the user logged in properly or the user put in the list properly, it will not work. So you got to make sure you have that. All right. So if you have any other questions, leave me a message or send me a comment or whatever you want to do. All right. Thank you very much for watching.